Good evening. We are live from the Callinan Contemporary Gallery here in Houston. We are arting in Houston. Well, doing art in Houston. It's called Race. Tonight we are going to experience some of Houston's finest artists, some of the best talent that you've seen, and we're going to find out how this particular event that is entitled Race is really affecting the people here. Um, we're trying to make a statement tonight with the um, title Race and Randall Callanan. This is his gallery that we're at tonight and we're very excited to be here. So we'll go ahead and take a walk around and look at some of the artwork. And uh, by the way, my name is Nafisa and I am with Stillwater's Media Lab. And we are happy to be here at the Callanan Contemporary Gallery. We are here with Randall Callanan. I'm really honored, first of all, to be standing here with Mr. Callanan. I'm honored for the opportunity to be in his gallery for this beautiful event called Race. Now, I have a couple questions for you, but first of all, I'd like to take a look at your wardrobe. I know usually with your uh, art shows, you kind of paint and make some uh, diverse suiting and all kinds of beautiful colors on your suit, but you kept it real simple, a little bit. Can you turn around so we can see this? So this is Randall Callanan, okay? <laughs> all right, tell you a little bit about Randall. Randall is an attorney for the ACLU. He deals with all kinds of civil matters, race matters, and I believe that's probably what inspired him, but I'm gonna let him tell us, first and foremost, what inspired you to come up with this idea for this event and to create an opportunity for so many diverse artists here in Houston. Well, uh, of course, as we all know, race uh, plays an important uh, part in society and in culture. And so by having these artists, over 50 artists, create works made on the subject, they had to think about the concept of race and what it means, and also the people come here uh, think about it and think about what that means and what what, what is it what is race uh, and uh, what does it mean and the feelings associated with it. So I just wanted to get people thinking about race, and I think uh, I've done it. I think you have as well, um, and that it, the artwork is very uh, thought-provoking. It is uh, very uh, inspiring when we talk to the artists, those that you've created this opportunity for. We're speaking with them. They're very happy to be here at the Callanan Contemporary um, Gallery, which also doubles as his a law office. So this is um, kind of a two-in-one kind of business, but the art, I believe, is definitely a passion. But being a lawyer, an attorney, is also a passion as well. Let me ask you this. We're going to take a look at this work. This is yours here? Yes. OK. We're going to go ahead and take a look at this, and we'll ask you a little bit about the work. I think it's absolutely beautiful, and it definitely has a little bit of a, a law slogan in here, and it, it kind of brings together you as an attorney and as an artist. And it says, I should have taken it to trial. Um, tell us a little bit about this and where the inspiration came from. Well, this is uh, actually uh, somewhat like Roy, Roy Lichtenstein's work. It's a pop art piece, and I just added uh, some things to it. Uh, but I should have taken it to trial. Many people have remorse, both in the criminal, if, if you're a criminal defendant, some people, you know, take a plea bargain, then they have remorse, I should have taken it to trial. But I also do civil law, and sometimes I think people have remorse if they took like a settlement for lower than they should have gotten. So it's kind of like remorse. I should have taken it to trial means they did not like their, the way that things turned out and they wish they would have taken it to trial. Absolutely. So it's an afterthought. Yeah, remorse. It's, yeah, it's a remorse. Call, lit, call it uh, litigator's remorse or defendant's remorse. Okay, great. So we just had a little bit of a, a lawyer um, law school here. So we definitely learned a little bit about that and how he's actually merged not only the gallery into the law office, but from his experience every day as a great attorney working for civil matters, which, I mean, you can't get any better than that, but I'm sure he does other types of uh, uh, legal work as well. So you do civil work, criminal work? Well, most of my work is actually involved in civil rights, and I do uh, criminal law about a quarter of the time, but most of my law regard revolves around what I call police misconduct. That is uh, excessive force, unreasonable searches and seizures, 
uh, and uh, false arrests and uh, illegal prosecutions. So basically, when the heavy hand of the law comes down on you, and uh, if you want to, if we can prove it, we can sue for civil civil damages under the civil rights laws, the federal civil rights laws. That is awesome, absolutely. So not only are you freeing people's minds with this art, but you're also freeing people out there in the world, and we really appreciate it. Again, this is Nafisa with Still Waters Media Lab. I'm standing here with our new friend and um, an artist that I admire, just looking at his work, Mr. Randall Callanan. Please, anytime, come to his gallery, see the work that's on display. We're located here at 511 Broadway. We're here in Houston, Texas. And that brings me to my last question. How do you feel about the art scene here in Houston? Are you originally from Houston, Randall? Well, uh, no, I'm originally from uh, Minnesota. I spent half my life in Minnesota, the first half. My second half in Texas, most all of it in Houston. And I became an artist about five years ago. And I found that the Houston artist scene is huge. Like for this show alone, we had 50 artists uh, who participated. And as you can see from the work, uh, most all of it is very good. So there are a lot, a lot of very talented artists in this town. Absolutely. And once again, we couldn't have said it better ourselves. We're here at the race event and it is being exhibited and the work speaks for itself. Thank you so much, Mr. Callanan, for the opportunity to corroborate or collaborate with you. Yeah, see, I'm talking all about, like, he's got me talking law stuff now. I feel like I'm a lawyer now. Yeah. We corroborate it. Yeah, that's, that's a legal term. You got somebody's got to corroborate the crime against you, so I don't know if there was any corroborating. I don't there was no corroboration, okay? It was a collaboration. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so very much once again. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of this beautiful artwork. Again, we are in Houston at the Callanan Contemporary Gallery. Its uh, curator is Mr. Randall Callanan, and we're very happy to be here tonight again at Steel Waters Media Lab. Let's take a look at some of this art. We have a piece here, and it is by Michael Woolton, a Houston artist. It is called And Still I Rise. And again, this particular event is entitled Race and it is the first of its kind at this gallery. So again, we're really excited to be here. We're gonna take a look around at some of the artwork and see what impact it has on myself and those that will be viewing this. Here we have by Penelope Catan, it's called A Black Beauty. She is Penelope Catan, we saw some of her work, we loved it, and uh, so you're a husband and wife team, right? Uh, yes. And tell me a little bit about why you all wanted to um, take part in this particular art show called Race. What inspired you to do that? Well, uh, I just l love it. I mean, I just, for me, that does not exist. For me, I love everybody. I, I really do. And I love to paint uh, black women and because I think they're very exotic beauty. And I'm into fashion. I love everything that's exotic and beautiful and different. And I feel honored to be able to participate. Also down here, we have one that is a piece by Betty Halpin. It's called the Doobie Brothers. They look like they're feeling good and having a great time riding, well, actually sitting on a park bench and uh, just enjoying the scenery. I'm so happy to be here with uh, Betty, and um, her last name is, Hal I want to pronounce it correctly. Halpern. Halpern, and we saw some of her work earlier, the beautiful painting of the Jewish lady kissing the uh, Native American guy. Yes, that's one. And tell me a little bit about that piece. How did that, what, what inspired you to do that? Well, I kind of like the idea, actually, of old people in love because old people actually love each other, and I think we forget about that. And we're a huge population of aging people. And as a retired physician, boy, I'm a, really aware of that more and more. And yikes, we're all gonna be driving, so look out, young folks. But I think 
just to capture the fact that there's real tenderness. And that's what appealed to me about it, amongst other things. Okay. Very good. I really like uh, what you said there because they were, you know, your age and those the age of the lady that's depicted in the picture, they actually saw a lot more race um, issues and uh, the consequence of racism and, and, and slavery and, and things like that. So I really love the way you came with that picture and you allowed that picture to be shown here at the Kalanick Contemporary Gallery for Race because it's really a great depiction of race, race integrating and loving one another and no matter what age, especially that age when they've seen a lot and gone through more than a lot of us in my age category and younger, we've read about it but we haven't lived through it. So we really appreciate that depiction. Now, we have a, this picture that we really loved. Um, it's called uh, Lemonade Stand Loneliness. Tell us the inspiration behind that, please. This is actually from a photograph I used as my inspiration. And it was actually a lemonade judging contest at the Children's Museum. And this young, beautiful child was being ignored by her family because they were involved with her older sister who was competing for the lemonade stand. But what I like about it is that while it's in the background, I love to show African American men in good family roles. I don't think we see that enough. And I think the only way we're going to see it is if we start to depict it. I've seen a lot of it in my life and in my patient population before I retired in my own personal life. But the only way we can show it is to show it. Absolutely. There's no need to keep the wool over the eyes of the people anymore because we do have African-American fathers as well as other fathers of other races that are very proactive in their children's lives and good ones at that. So we really appreciate that. Uh, coming from someone that was close to their dad. He was super supportive in anything that we did. He was a teacher and an educator, so he taught us how to be in existence in this society. So we really appreciate that. This is very beautiful, and it, it really shows a lot. We have three generations right here, which I think is pretty special. My children are blessed to have loved and known three out of four of their grandparents. I think that you cannot say enough about grandparents in a child's life either. Absolutely. Just had my first grandbaby, I'm going to tell you. Oh, it's it's a beautiful, wonderful, love it, love it for zygote kind of phenomenon. But. No, it is. It is. That is definitely a blessing, and thanks for sharing that with us. What I want to also ask you is, where did you get the, well, one thing I want to know, are you from Houston? Or where are you from originally? I'm from Southern California, but I've lived here since the 70s. Since the 70s. So pretty much I'm from yes. here. Okay, so she's pretty much, much a Houstonian now. And tell me a little about, about, about your feelings about the Houston art scene and what can we do to bring more uh, light to the wonderful diverse artists here in our metropolitan Houston area. It's a little like the restaurant scene. It's a very quiet, very special, very diverse scene that's all over a huge area just in terms of, of mileage. And there are marvelous galleries from Galveston all the way up past the airport. Um, I, I don't think it's just one cohesive thing, however. And this is an incredible opportunity to be part of this show. Over here we have a piece that is by Mick McAllister. It's called Mardi Gras Joy. That's a very beautiful piece. Here we have another piece. It doesn't have the label, but uh, what I'm getting here is a gentleman just sitting playing a banjo or some kind of musical instrument, just enjoying the scenery and landscaping. Joining me now, is Andrew Yoist. Now, he just disclosed to me, which I'm finding it hard to believe, that he is a beginner or a student of art. And, and behind us is this beautiful artwork. He's going to tell us a little bit about it. Are you from Houston originally? No, ma'am. I'm from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Louisiana. Yes. Well, let me ask you this. 
what could, what made you contribute to this art show and how long you've been painting here in Houston? Well, I'm an uh, art student at St. Jack Central Campus and I was going to go to school to become a writer. I wanted to write children's books. And so I met uh, an instructor named Todd Allison and he was the one that said, well, if you're a writer, you're an artist. Absolutely. And so he said, well, you're taking my class, so let's see what you can do. And he's the one to put a brush in my hand and now I want to be a fine arts major. And so, so now I've changed from writing to putting my words into color. So that's what I do. Expression is, is a beautiful thing, whether it's written, whether it's spoken, whether it's painted or sculpted. So you're definitely still doing something artsy and expressing yourself. And even on, even on a deeper level, I would say, because with artwork, you have to really come from your soul, just like when you're writing. So let's take a look at your work here. Again, Andrew Yoist, he has one, and he's kept it very basic as far as the titles, but the pictures are awesome. There's always two or three paintings in one painting. I'm uh, an ADHD adult, and I do not take medication, so things can change over the course of time when I'm working. I only had about 10 days to work on this. And so I make the frame, everything is recycled material, recycled canvas. A lot of my paint's even donated that I use from people that they give me stuff. But then I buy a clear coat and other things that I need. But this is my, my example of trying to stop racism from a global, international way because I thought Hitler was the worst ever. And so I took the bunny and the Hitler and put them together. And the reason why that was is that I thought he always thought he was a predator when all he was was a prey. Because when you go against ethics and the man himself, and I think that he'll overturn you, and now he's the rabbit that we were trying to catch him now. Hey, that's phenomenal, and we're going to zoom into that work, and uh, that is great. Um, as he stated, uh, Mr. Andrew Yoyce, and I really appreciate you sharing that with me as far as your um, ADHD uh, in, in adulthood and how uh, Hitler himself became the prey, and all the time he thought he was the predator. So he ended up losing, which we all know, and there were a lot of lives lost, which is a very, very great contribution to this theme tonight, which is called Race Here at the Kalanen Contemporary Gallery. So we really appreciate you talking with us, Mr. Andrew Yoist, and we really appreciate your artwork. It's absolutely very beautiful. And where can we see any more of your work? I'm on Pinterest, and then I'm also on Facebook, Andrew Yoist. You know, Andrew Yoist on Facebook, and you'll see in my photos. I usually work off Facebook. I'm putting Pinterest together. I'm on uh, St. Jack's website also, so. Okay, great, so you're going to school and they're already uh, exhibiting your work. Yes, I've been in the, almost every exhibit since, the, not this last one, but I've been in like six of theirs already, so. Wow, well, it looks like you have a bright future ahead of you as an artist. And let me ask you this, how do you feel about the art scene here in Houston? You're from Louisiana. Um, I'm not sure how artsy it is there. Tell us a little bit about why you contributed and what your feelings are uh, about the art scene here in Houston. Uh, well, I've been around New Orleans and stuff all my life and, you know, the French Quarter and all that, you know, that has a lot of history. But here, since we're the most diversified city, or one of them, yes. is that I think the art world is coming together, no matter if you're black, white, Chinese, or whatever. Right. And, I mean, look at the work we're looking at today. And I think this is what we're going to need to blow it up around here. And I want to be a part of it. And here we have another Penelope uh, Catan. It's entitled Mama. And we all know this picture because our mamas probably look like that in the morning <laughs> while they're getting us ready for school. <laughs> all righty. Or when she's had a hard day and cooked and took care of children. So I, I really love that piece. We all love our mamas. This is a beautiful piece as well. I don't see the artist's name, but uh, probably as a self-portrait. So maybe we'll run into the artist a little bit later. Uh, this one here is uh, trying to read the um, artist's name, but there's a lot of different words um, um, in your mind and, you know, just different words for you to read and kind of stare at this. And I'm thinking by these words coming from her mind, maybe the artist was trying to say, these are all the scattered thoughts that that person has that 
painted this particular picture. It actually looks like a pencil with a little bit of acrylic and uh, sketching. So it's actually very beautiful, really great detail as well. Right here we have Betty Halpin, Reflections. Perhaps that's someone she knows or maybe even herself. Uh, hopefully we may get to meet that artist and ask them exactly what they were thinking and where they were in their state of mind when they painted that particular portrait. We are with Hakeem Hassan, the artist. And he really needs no introduction. This is actually one of my personal friends, my brother, my business partner, my artist that I love to promote. And he has such phenomenal work. And he contributed to this opening. And his work really speaks volumes on race and what this particular show is about. Hakeem, can you tell us a little bit about this beautiful piece right here? This is amazing. It's Eve, you know, it represents our women, how they are, how beautiful they are, um, the technique, the texture, everything how it's been put together, it's just a well-rounded woman. Okay, so this is Eve, as in the mother of civilization. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. And of course, we're gonna get some close-ups of this because she is absolutely beautiful. She represents nature. She represents woman. She represents all women. And by it being Eve, we know we all came from Eve. And she's the mother of us all. So she is a woman that has no race. And many races came from her. So this is awesome. This is very beautiful work. And uh, we hear there are some other pieces that goes along with this. Hopefully we'll get to see that. And um, we'll go ahead and take a look at some of the other work that Hakeem Hassan has uh, contributed to this show. And what we're also going to do is let you know his work is on display 24 hours a day, seven days a week at the Laughlin Gallery as well. Uh, the Laughlin Institute Gallery is located at 7457, and that's on Harwin Drive, Suite 251B. So if you want to see more of his work, more of Danny Jones's work, and other beautiful artwork, please come by and, and take a look at that as well. And we're going to be featuring Mr. Callanan's work there soon also. All right, Hakeem. Now this particular piece here is another dynamic piece of artwork from a man that needs no introduction. This one is called Mr. Sally, and we're gonna take a look at that one. But let me ask you about the art scene in Houston as a whole. How does this event contribute to the art scene, impacts the art scene? And you've been in Houston for many, many years, originally from New York, a great artist that has put your work all over the Houston area. Tell me how Houston art scene is. Well, basically, um, the art scene needs to be more motivated as far as creativity is concerned. Um, to me, it's lacking a lot of creativity. Uh, the city is so big as far as being the next New York could be. Uh, I think the art work should also reflect that uh, point also. Okay, so a large city, very diverse, very metropolitan. Are you saying that the art scene needs a little bit more of a boost here? Yes, it's more of a boost, you know, different artists so forth. They need to show more of the artists as far as being, uh, there's a lot of artists here in Houston, but they don't get a chance to show okay. their artwork. You know? Okay. Alrighty, and I know you yourself as an art instructor, a professor of art, and you yourself give artists an opportunity. So we appreciate you being here in Houston, being a part of the art scene in Houston, giving artists a chance, and being my friend and my brother. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we're gonna take a look at this work as well. Now, this one you gotta kinda inhale, then exhale when you take a look at it, cause it really hits you, especially with the theme of race. The picture speaks for itself, but we're gonna find out a little bit about where he was in his mind when he actually painted this beautiful picture. He has one of my favorite fruits there, too bad it's not edible. However, at the bottom here is more of this particular artwork, and it looks like a bale of cotton. Fortunately, I've never had to pick a bale of cotton. However, this is cotton. It's actual real cotton. And um, Hakeem Hassan, we'll bring him back over here. He's trying to get away from the camera. <laughs> 
All righty, yes, one more question. I won't monopolize too much of your time. Where were you in your mind when you actually painted this, and what was your motivation? Basically, it's, it's, it's part of our history. You know, during the menstrual period, during the 30s and 20s, 40s, before we used to have black faces. So my motivation comes from, you know, showing us this, this is part of our history, and we can't get away from it. So nothing to be ashamed about. It's just this is part of our history. Very much so. And it's a part of our history that makes us who we are today, that makes this country what it is today. And all the multiracial people and contributors here at this show, we all definitely are wearing cotton. And we have uh, that era to thank for a lot of different things. So we, we really, again, appreciate your work. And uh, we look forward to seeing more. Good evening. Again, we are here with uh, Angela. Smith. She's one of the contributing artists here at the Kaladin Contemporary Gallery here in Houston, Texas. We're really happy to speak with her. We saw some of her art earlier. She's going to tell us a little bit about her inspiration. Not only does Angela do beautiful artwork, but she's also a designer of jewelry, and her jewelry reflects her artwork. And I'll let her tell you a little bit more about it. Angela, first of all, thank you for letting us speak with you. Stillwater's Media Lab appreciates you doing this with us. Okay. All righty. Now, are you from Houston? Yes, I'm originally from Houston. Okay, great. And let me ask you, how do you feel this event actually impacts the art scene in Houston? And tell us a little bit about the art scene in Houston. Well, I've noticed that it's starting to become a popular trend right now. Um, it's not just high-income people attending the exhibits, but also a variety of different incomes. They want to be empowered, and they want to get the education and the knowledge behind the artwork. And I noticed that it's been a big boom lately. Okay, great. Thank you so much for that. And as you see, as I said before, Houston is so diverse, and there's so many contributing factors to this environment and this metropolitan city. And of course, here at this art gallery is a reflection of that. Now, what I want to ask you, Angela, is what inspired you to do those pieces? And we looked at those, and uh, people are going to be able to see those. Tell us a little bit about your pieces and what inspired you to do those. Like, where were you in your state of mind? Okay, well, all of my pieces that I submitted for the event, okay. um, they all go with the cage bird. And that is um, from the popular Maya Angelou poem. I know why the cage bird sings. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. And you know it's not about birds. Absolutely. It's about women and some of the issues that we go through. Absolutely. And what we are going to do just to dream and to be free, that longing that's right there. This is originally called Ring the Alarm. And it's about a woman and her self-liberation, kind of discovery of herself. Um, it's inspired from actually a popular celebrity, Stacey Dash. And so I wanted to do it in a theme for the exhibit. And I talked about caged birds. And I wanted to apply it for her. And that's why I drew on her chest the wings. Yeah. It's, it's, you see how it's feathered out and it's pretty pink. Um, she's bold and she's very radiant. So, and this piece right here, um, it's it's actually inspired um, from Rihanna, and I was envisioning her as being like a golden phoenix, like a bird in flight. And um, so that's why I drew the necklace. I like designing jewelry, as you know. No. And in her hair are the lyrics from the song "I Love the Way You Lie." And it talks about a little bit as far as some of the in internal struggles that we go through as women and kind of being in harmful relationships. Okay, yes, yes, and, and so that's why I wanted to kind of symbolize because I think she, she's going through a lot. Yes. That is great. That is awesome. And that's actually beautiful. I couldn't describe that better. So we're really happy that you took the time, the time to tell us about these particular pieces. Now, let me ask you. What inspired you? Besides showing your beautiful work, networking, and having an opportunity to stand here with me, how, uh, what inspired you to actually take part in this? Because I see you have a lot of women, and of course, it's race. You, you're looking at the caged bird, as we said, inspired by Dr. Naya Angelou's 
uh, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, and it is uh, really talking about the Afro-American woman and the different uh, things that we've gone through in history and with our marriages. And not only does it affect African-American women, but we're doing something that's near and dear to her. So as an African-American woman, woman, she has contributed these art pieces to the race show. And why did you do that? Well, when um, I saw the posting actually on the social media website, okay. and I saw that it represented cultural diversity, okay. and it was promoting different issues that are going on with our country as far as inequality. Yeah. And I always, I've been painting that all along. Okay. It's something that is close to my heart. It's some of the things that I've also struggled with. Okay. Um, I have my sister-in-law, she's Mexican and black, and so, you know, it's it's just really a, a it, it's, it's a lot of, yeah. 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 And I, I was raised um, in a private school that was mostly white. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I knew what it felt like to be stuck out like a sore thumb. Okay, I understand. And so um, when Randall approached, when I saw it, also, I said, I gotta be a part of this. Yeah. And I did more work. I did a, actually a painting called Inequality that's over there. Okay, we'll definitely take a look at that. Okay. Uh -huh. the and there's, there's one more over here called um, Breaking Out Good. Okay. And that's actually, it shows the cage, like a cage bird. Yes. And it shows a woman that's in darkness. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, we had a great opportunity to look at those, and we really appreciate uh, Angela being here with us. Angela, where else can we see your work? What you got coming up? Well, next week I have this exhibit and it's called Light to the World. It's going to be at the Fifth Ward Community Resource Center. Okay. And that's off of I-10 in Waco. And it's okay. going to be a lot of spiritual art. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, we're going to have poetry. It's, it's, in, it's launching a spiritual arts and crafts gallery. Okay. A lot of artists, they're very spiritual about their work. Absolutely. It's coming from their souls. Uh, this is a beautiful mixture of a sketch. And I will wear that dress. Um, feathers and something really beautiful that um, this artist has created. And I uh, haven't seen the name on there, but again, it's a very, very beautiful piece here at the Race Art Show at the Kaladin Contemporary Gallery. And this piece is by Alice Hung. It's called One World. Um, this is beautiful. I don't know how you feel about this, those of you who will be viewing this, but you can see all the diversity, all the different ages, all of the different races, which is why we're here at the Kaladin Contemporary Gallery, because this is the race event. And now we're here with Alice Hung. Now, Alice, I really, really enjoyed this piece, but I know I cannot tell about the art better than the artist. So let's see where your mind was and what you were thinking when you painted this painting, which is called One World. It's beautiful. I love the detail and each one of the nationalities that you have here, and I really love that. So tell us a little bit about what you were thinking when you did that. Yeah. Hi, uh, everybody. Thank you. And uh, this is my uh, art book before, a few days ago. And we, they, when they let me know we have the, uh, a gallery in here, the subject is the race. Yeah. So in my mind, just prop it up. What the race I can think about, I would, I would like to say, I want the, everybody to live in the one world, all help each other together. That's why I put all the different phrases, come, come from all different countries, all different uh, graphic, different. you see all the different uh, faces, they are acting different. So it means I will tell the world, hopefully the future on, we all get together like a same family, it doesn't matter where we come from. That's right. That is absolutely beautiful. That's what I thought you meant with this particular piece here. And I can definitely see that you just, when you thought about race and you wanted to enter your work to make a statement in this particular art show that is entitled race, you couldn't just think of one race. You thought about everyone. That's beautiful. That shows that you have such a big, beautiful heart. And let's listen to what Alice Hong has said. She said, let's all get together. Let's live together. Let's be peaceful as one big, happy world. And that's why this is called called One World. And that one again is One World because really we're all in this world together. We're going to take a step over here and this is Betty Halpern. Betty Halpern. This one is called The Kiss and as you see the uh, Native American in this particular photo or this particular painting looks like an oil on canvas. Very beautiful colors just bursting at you. And you can see that there are two different races of people 
kind of just commingling together. And again, this is what this is all about, bringing people together in the art scene or on the art scene here in Houston at the race show. We all remember this. We won't say any names, but we know by this particular piece that there was a huge controversy over race, race uh, prejudice, uh, racism, and racist remarks. This particular one is by Danny, and Danny is actually a great artist. Um, he's very happy to be showing his work here at the Kaladin Contemporary Gallery, and he is also affiliated with the Stillwaters Media Lab. So we definitely like this piece, and this one is called The N-Word. Again, The N-Word. So that one hit the nail right on the head with this race theme. Joining us now here at the Kalanen Contemporary Gallery is Danny Jones. We saw some of his work earlier. I let you know that his work is also on display at several different galleries here in the Houston and surrounding areas. However, uh, the Laughlin Institute's gallery is now uh, holding some of his pieces as well. Um, some of the Obama pieces, we saw the Obama piece earlier, and we also saw the piece that's called the N-Word. And uh, we know that was a very, very touchy subject, and we know that that was a very controversial controversial topic and um, tell us a little bit about what in inspired you aside from the obvious that happened. Well, um, years back uh, I guess I was a big Seinfeld fan and the Kramer piece is something that in the show that they actually did um, and I guess I followed the show the big part of the show was was Cosmo Kramer and then he had the meltdown and on stage and uh, basically the n-word flew out quite a few times uh, the piece was done now if you look at the piece real close there's a couple hidden words which quote-unquote is the n-word um, a lot of my friends see it and they're going like why in the world would you paint that until they kind of pick it apart right and then they see and it, it I guess it's like a dual meaning to the, the, the painting. So. Absolutely. I'm getting from this that you are a great big fan of that particular character on the Seinfeld show, yes. as I believe many of us were, him coming running, sliding into Seinfeld's apartment, and just hilarious. And we all had a, a mutual respect for this particular person. And I think that that really probably hit home with you yes. by that word being derogatory to people of African American uh, heritage, and it was a letdown. Yes. So you wanted to capture that. And the feeling is there because we saw it was a lot of darks and a lot of, you know, smoky gray, um, for lack of better words, depressing kind of a picture because it really hurt you and it hit home with you, right? Very correct. Uh, and it's it's something I hope that it carries over to ones that like the the person and hopefully makes it sweeter. Yes. Absolutely. Well, it is a very beautiful piece. The uh, detail is phenomenal. And what I want to go ahead and do is ask you a little bit about the Obama piece that you have over there as well. With that piece, it is uh, the problem with Reverend, Wright. with Reverend Wright. Tell us a little bit about that. What inspired you there? Um, well, with the, Obama's journey, he had to, to kind of pick between religion and politics. Absolutely. So he had to separate with Reverend Wright to... I guess further his journey and and you could see the struggle that he was going through there so tried to make a, a, a point to say this is what he was doing absolutely and the picture does look like he's in deep thought and it looks like uh, he's contemplating what do I do and it's great because we know as um, Obama supporters and you know the country we live in he is our president so we see that he did not let one influence the other however he did keep a balance in between the two what do you think yes and he's a strong man just to stick by his goals yeah absolutely so we really appreciate this danny we'll look at some more of your work i saw another piece over there you know i know you're a great artist and you asked me to sign your jacket so i'm going to give you my autograph okay don't ebay this Unless you give me a cut, okay? Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. All right, it close to your heart. Nafisa. Now, Danny is such a great artist. Of course, we had to have more of his pieces here tonight. 
So this one is another one by Danny Jones. And Danny's work can also be seen at the Laughlin Institute Gallery as well. Um, that is located on 7457 Harwin Drive, Suite 251B. You can see more of his art as well as another artist that we'll come up to in just a minute. But this one is uh, called The Problem with Reverend Wrights. And we knew about that and we all heard about that. And this is President Obama looking off into the distance, kind of wondering probably why would someone have hate for him and he's only trying to do his job that he was elected to do. So there's some more Obama pieces, I believe here, but this one is going to be the one that is entitled The Problem with Reverend Wright. This one is quite interesting. It is the, a bust <laughs> with no arms, and uh, it's, uh, he has a six pack, by the way, and it's really great with all the colors, the red, the yellow, the pink, the purple, and that beautiful green. Just looks like a field of happiness. This piece is by Solomon Kane. Okay. Solomon Kane. He is a great Houston artist. I've actually had the opportunity to show his work before, so I can't wait to see him. Um, and he definitely plays with a lot of neon colors, so you'll probably see more of that from Solomon Kane this evening. Now, this one here is also a work of a beautiful art. Um, a sister with her hands on her hips. Well, one of her hips anyway, and I don't see the name of the artist. Um, however, it's very beautiful, and um, it is contributing to the theme here of a race here at the Callanan Contemporary Gallery. Mr. Kyle Fu, he was very, very generous enough to share with us this beautiful piece here at the Callanan Contemporary Gallery, and he was also very nice to speak with us here at Stillwater's Media Lab. Mr. Fu, yes. first of all, I just want to tell you, you are very sharp. You're wearing my favorite color, green. And I don't want to touch you, but it looks like it's velvet. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're very much welcome. Kyle, can you tell us where you're from, first of all? Well, I was uh, from Taiwan, Chinese, yes. Okay, so we have a lot of diversity on the art scene here in Houston. Can you tell us a little bit about the Houston art scene and how you contribute to it? Okay. Well, Houston Art Scene is uh, growing every day, every year. I've been here 10 years. We have uh, many, many different nationality, and they're showing the great diversity, which is, I love it. Yeah. Great, great. And that's why we're here. We're here focusing on the diversity in Houston. We're focusing on the diversity in art, and of course, beautiful artwork with expressions from all different backgrounds and, uh, and cultures. Now, let me ask you about this painting right here. Uh -huh. Now, you told me a little bit about it, but I'm going to let you tell about it. Our cameraman is going to zoom into that. And um, it looks very 3D-ish. Is that correct? Yes. This is called Modernization of uh, Samurai and Geisha. Yes, yeah, about the culture, how we have a tradition, but everything changed, become modernized. So I used a Sunday paper coupon and cut out and made a, the traditional samurai suit. And but it made out of like a lawnmower, today modern, you know, house, you know, housewife and husband, what they do. Yeah, that's what they look like. Great. And you said the moderniz modernization. Okay. So geisha, as we know, is, is ancient Chinese uh, culture. So with you having the dragon here, um, a dress, kimono dress, and it's really very beautiful. And he has a samurai, so they could be a husband and wife team that has moved into a more uh, modern day. And this is beautifully depicted. So we definitely appreciate it. Now, Mr. Fu, let me ask you. Um, where can we see more of your work? Okay, well, I'm also an origami artist, and also I have the art gallery, Kazen Art Space in Houston Galleria. We are temporary closed, but we will reopen, you know, and we're looking for new clothing. We're promoting Houston artists. We're promoting over 500 artists in Houston area. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's a lot of artists, and I have been on the art scene in Houston for about 11 years as well. So I've seen so many diverse pieces of work. This one is just very astonishing. I like the way you really took an everyday piece of paper, a cell paper, and you put all of the different things that we're now using in today's society that wasn't customary to be used, of course, because it wasn't invented yet. Right, because long time ago, well, Gaze Arco would not have an oven, <laughs> would not have a vacuum cleaner, but today is a part of daily life. 
So, but it's still very beautiful. We combined up, you know, old and the new. Yeah. The old and the new. Well, we really appreciate you speaking with us. Still Waters Media Lab looks forward to coming and seeing some of your other work and following you here in Houston because uh, that's what we want to do. The Houston art scene is so eclectic and this is an example of it with Mr. Kyle Fu. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for me too. Yeah, I'm really honored. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'm honored as well. You're the talent. You're the artist. Oh, we need more people like, you know, say a water lab to promote it. I'll let everybody know what is going on out here. They're going to be so important for all of us.